Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will prove this interesting theorem that if the decisional defigelman problem is assumed to be hard, then Elgamal encryption is CPA secure. CPA means chosen plain text attack secure, meaning an attacker cannot figure out which plain text message is being encrypted. Suppose there are two messages, say M0 and M1, and um, the attacker is observing the ciphertext. He can't map the plain text to the ciphertext. That's the meaning of CPA secure informally. Okay. So I'm going to prove this theorem that if the decisional defigelman problem is hard, then Elgamal encryption is CPA secure. Okay. Uh, I assume that you already watched the video segments on decisional defigelman and Elgamal encryption. So I'm going to make use of all the notations that we have been using. Uh, our goal is to set up an experiment as follows. We have a challenger and we have an adversary. Um, the adversary, uh, as part of the first step, will emit two messages, M0, M1. Uh, they both are messages from the group, the publicly agreed upon group G of uh, order Q, uh, G is the generator, H is the public key. So the adversary just picks M0, M1 from the group G because the Elgamal encryption only works from the group, okay? The message must be part of the group G. And the challenger will go ahead and select, uh, randomly select uh, a binary. It could be zero or one and they encrypts one of the messages. It could be either M0 or M1. So a challenger encrypts it and send it to adversary. Adversary will do his magic, okay? Adversary knows uh, the encryption algorithm, um, the public parameters, but he doesn't know the private key. Adversary does his magic and says, okay, I believe challenger has probably encrypted B prime, okay? B prime could be, of course, either zero or one. So uh, when will the adversary win? The adversary wins if his guess of B is same as the B the challenger has chosen, right? Let's assume the challenger decided to encrypt M1. If the adversary says, oh, B prime is one, that means adversary wins. So of course, any adversary can win with a probability of half, right? By just making a blind guess. Um, what we are going to say is that um, for our uh, in encryption scheme to be CPA secure, um, the probability that an adversary can win this game is half plus that's a really, really tiny amount negligible in N. N is the security parameter. You can imagine um, Q is the order of the group and how many bits are in the order, okay? So I can say um, number of bits in the group order is N. You can imagine N is the security parameter, okay? All right. So if, <clears throat> if we can prove this, that means we are saying that adversary cannot win this game better than half probability, okay? This is a very, very tiny number. That's the way we are going to prove this theorem, okay? How are we going to prove it? We are going to approach it in multiple steps. The first step, we are going to modify the experiment. So this experiment is called public key eavesdropping experiment. Only eavesdropping is allowed. Nobody's allowed to modify this traffic or this traffic or not. And A is the adversary that you are seeing here. Pi is the um, encryption scheme, in this case, Elgamal encryption scheme. So we are going to modify Pi and call it Pi prime as follows. Let's randomly pick two numbers Y and Z from the from the group ZQ. And um, let's output the pair Z power Y, Z power Z times M. Okay, uh, this is a useless output because nobody can recover M from it, right? Because Z power Z is a random number, right? You multiply a random number with the M, there's no way you could recover M. We proved that also in the perfect secrecy of a cyclic group uh, scenario. So this scheme is um, kind of useless, okay? Nobody can recover M from it, but still it is good to know that an adversary seeing this cannot recover M. Therefore, uh, the probability that an adversary uh, can win a game where the encryption algorithm is just um, G power Y and G power Z times M pair, okay? There's no adversary can win this game better than half. So you can just make a guess. So the probability an adversary can win, this game is just half, okay? He can win by just making a rough guess by tossing a coin, for example, okay? Remember, this is modified uh, experiment. That's why you put a pi and a tilde on top. All right, now we will use a modified experiment as part of another experiment, okay? So let's design a distinguisher algorithm D as follows. D takes arguments G, Q, uh, G, H1, H2, H3. I will explain all the arguments in a moment. The first four are public. We had talked about it earlier. Uh, what is H1? Uh, H1 can be G power X. Okay, you in, in this case, it is G power X, you can imagine. X is the private uh, variable. Okay. And uh, what the adversary is going to do is he's, he's going to give two messages, M0, M1 to the distinguisher. Okay, this is the, the part. So what will the um, distinguisher do with it? The distinguisher 
will randomly generate a bit B and he will go ahead and do the computation like this. He will compute the ciphertext one as H2, ciphertext two as H3 times MB. MB could be either M0 or M1, depending on what B uh, was chosen. And he publishes to the adversary C1 comma C2, okay? Now, the goal of the adversary is to figure out whether did uh, uh, the distinguisher choose M0 or M1, right? So this is the algorithm D. Now let's instantiate this algorithm for two cases. Case one, uh, we call uh, with G, Q, G, G power X, G power Y, G power Z, okay? In that case, uh, what is the behavior of the adversary? The behavior of the adversary in this case is same as the behavior of the adversary in the context of the modified experiment, right? Because we are passing G power Z, which is a random number. So we're going to directly plug this random number here, right? This, this is H3. So nobody can recover MP from a random number because nobody knows how to get, uh, how to solve that, okay? That, that's basically random number multiplied by message is a random number. All right, so let's consider the case one. We call D with G, Q, G, G power X, G power Y, G power Z, right? So now if you think about it, the behavior of A in this input case is same as the behavior of A when, uh, when it was part of the pi prime experiment, right? Because in pi prime, random uh, key G power Z uh, to encrypt the message M. We do the same here. H3 is random because it's G power Z, okay? Therefore, the probability that the distinguisher outputs one is same as the probability that the distinct, uh, the key, ex key exchange experiment um, pi, pi delta outputs one, okay? Which is nothing but half because um, we proved earlier that when you encrypt a message with the random key, the probability uh, that an adversary can win this game is just half by randomly guessing, okay? Now consider the case where we, we call D with the good arguments, meaning G power X, G power Y, G power X, Y. Well, in that case, what is the probability that the D outputs one? Well, D outputs one if B is gets to be same as B prime, which means the behavior of A in this case, right, must be the same as the behavior of A in the, in the original experiment, okay? In the original experiment, we don't modify anything with pi. We kept pi as it is. That means the probability that D outputs one is same as the probability that the experiment uh, A pi is outputting one, public key experiment, okay. Okay, so what does it mean by um, DDH problem is hard? It means that the probability that the distinguisher can distinguish two inputs. What are the inputs? Uh, the group G, order of the group, the generator of the group, and G power X, G power Y, uh, G power Z, the case one, right? This probability equal to one minus minus the probability that uh, it's the same group parameter. So I'm not writing the group parameters again and again, uh, just G power X, G power Y, G power X, Y. Okay, that's the second case, case two. So we do know that this probability difference is, is negligible because we assume DDH is hard. Okay, that means this probability is negligible. The difference between these two probabilities is uh, negligible. That's because of the problem statement. Okay, all right. But what about this part? Uh, this part is nothing but the, the half, right? We have, we have achieved this is half. So this is, this means half minus, but what about this probability? This is nothing but the probability of eavesdropping experiment, probability of eavesdropping experiment, original experiment by eavesdropping. Okay, so this has to be equal to one because that's the the second part of the probability, if that is, now we already know this difference is less than or equal negligible of n. Okay, so you can just use the same expression, which means if the difference is negligible of n, what can you say about this? This must be just half plus negligible. You can just move the half to the other side. So we achieved the goal. Okay, so let me summarize what we proved so far. What we proved is that um, if DDH problem is hard, then we proved successfully that Elgamal encryption is, is secure. To prove something is secure, we need to construct this experiment like challenger and adversary. Adversary emits two messages, M0, M1. Challenger randomly picks a message and gives it to, like, pick, gives the encryption of the message to adversary. Adversary is going to make a guess. If his guess is correct, meaning he is saying, oh, you encrypted M0 or you encrypted M1. Uh, if the guess B prime is same as the B that was chosen, then adversary wins. Okay, now we need to show the probability and adversary win what we proved. We said, okay, half plus some negligible quantity. So we achieved that half minus 
probability of the experiment is bounded by negligible of n. That means this number in the box must be uh, slightly more than half plus negligible of n, right? Okay, so that's the proof. And in order to prove that, we created a distinguisher D and uh, we made use of the adversary um, and uh, we um, call the distinguisher in two different settings. One setting is a totally random collection of numbers, g power x, g power y, g power z. Um, g power z is random. Therefore, um, adversary making a, a correct guess uh, and winning the game is just half because this, this message is encrypted using a random key, right? As opposed to g power x, y. And in the case two is g power x, y. That means um, the, the probability that the distinguisher outputs one is same as the probability that the adversary over here makes a, a good guess, okay? Um, but we do know that the distinguished DDH problem is hard. That means the difference between the probabilities um, of uh, calling the D with two different arguments is at most um, negligible of N. And therefore we were able to easily derive a conclusion that the original experiment uh, is bounded by half plus negligible of N because the difference is here is half minus something is less than or equal to negligible, negligible in n. That means this must be uh, half plus negligible of n at most. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.